Hello and welcome. I'm James Bagger. I'm the founder of Cardina Magazine. And today we're talking to Darren Martin. He's head of valuations for CAP HPI. Uh, but we're not talking about cars today, are we, Darren? We're, going, we're talking about a far more serious subject. Um, one that you've contacted me and, and really would like to get the message out there to a, to a male-dominated industry like our own. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, I've got a few questions myself, but uh, l let's start the story off. Darren, explain why, why we're having the chat today. Yeah, just I wanted to share my story. I, I, um, I got diagnosed with prostate cancer uh, completely out of the blue uh, last October. Uh, well, that's when the journey sort of started for me. Uh, I've since uh, had an operation and uh, I'm now fully recovered. But um, uh, the more I look into to this disease, it's, um, it's very common. One in eight uh, men will get it at some point in their lifetime. And I just think I've got a bit of a story to tell on, on how I got diagnosed and, and what happened and then how it was resolved. There are a lot of men in a, a lot worse um, state with it than me. Um, and I think um, without being too dramatic about it, if it hadn't been caught um, when it was, I probably would have had maybe a, a 10 year lifespan ahead of me. So, so Darren, explain to, explain to us how that happened then. I mean, how was it caught and diagnosed when it was? Um, so on holiday last year, so about August time, um, I had a, I, I started getting a bit of a pain in my foot and it was just a bit irritating, a bit annoying. Um, and, you know, blokes do, I left it, waited about a month and then it carried on. I thought I'm going to go to the doctor about this. So I went to the doctor and pain in the, uh, pain getting a, getting a, um, appointment at the doctor's, but, um, managed to go, go in and, um, spoke to her and she said, um, no idea what it is, but we'll have a blood test. Um, it could be gout. Um, which obviously you think, okay. So um, that's what I said, okay, well, if we're going to have a blood test, I said, I'd actually like to have uh, my PSA tested, which is a, a prostate, um, so it's levels in your prostate. So um, she said, why? And I said, well, I've had symptoms over the years, but they kind of come and go. You just go, need to go to the toilet a bit more often than I used to. I thought it was a sign of ageing, but I'd, I'd had it, if I'm honest, I'd had it since a very heavy stag do in, when I was in my 30s. So I just thought it's just part of life. I had once said to a doctor um, that I, I've had some issues here. If I ever did develop prostate cancer, how would I know? And he said, you wouldn't. The symptoms are very much the same. So um, my father died when he was 70. Um, and he died of cancer, but we, we don't necessarily know it's prostate cancer. And the third reason for wanting to check was pretty much it's, on the, it's in the news, and I saw people wearing the little um, uh, the little male figures, and I just thought, um, just something you should get checked out, really. And I very rarely go to the doctor. She tried to talk me out of it. She said, uh, she says, you're only 48, you've got no symptoms, uh, why do you want this doing? And I said, well, I really would like it doing. The ironic thing is that uh, the pain in my feet completely went away, was absolutely unrelated to it. Um, so I persuaded the GP that I, I wanted to have my PSA tested when I went for this blood test. Went for the blood test about a week later um, and got literally got a phone call probably 12 hours after that blood test saying, you need to come in and see us. Uh, your PSA level is high. So I went in to see them and ever since that point, the NHS has been absolutely fantastic sent me to uh, to the hospital to, to the urology department to be tested um, I had an MRI scan my PSA level wasn't dramatically high so it should be under four at my age and it was about six some people's is 200 if it's so if it's that bad so so it was um, it was a it was a concern I then went through a period of time where so I had the MRI scan went to see the uh, the, the specialist afterwards who Said, um, I think you're all right. We haven't got the full, um, we haven't got the full MRI scan back yet, but it looks like everything's fine. So I was okay. I then got called back following the full results of the MRI, and they said you need to have a biopsy. At this point, I was thinking, do I really? Uh, the guy said I was fine. Um, so he said, yeah, we really think you should have a biopsy. So I went and had the biopsy, um, and from then that sort of set the hairs running. Really, that they found out that um, well, I, I then had. Um, an appointment booked to follow up the biopsy and that was on a Tuesday on the Thursday I got a phone call saying we need to cancel that appointment you need to have an appointment with a specialist nurse and with a urologist at that point I thought this specialist nurse means it, it, it's obviously bad news bear in mind that was on the Thursday and the appointment was on a Tuesday I had 
like a, a four days of pretty much thinking I was going to die. Actually, I thought that I've had it, cancer. You hear the word. Um, it was it was pretty dramatic for me, really, and I, I was I was very I was really worried, obviously. Derek, I mean, let, let's face it, blokes are not very good at going to the doctors, are they? I mean, I know I say no, I'm one of them. You know, yeah. I'm in a family of four brothers, and, and we're all exactly the same. But it's vitally important that people who, who feel they have that, that they're not feeling quite right go and have these things checked out, aren't they? And I mean, it, what would you say to people um, who who might be in, who might be doubting themselves and just, don't know where? Just, to... You've just got to go. As I say, I I went more out of gut feel than anything. I don't know what it was made me go. I'm so glad I went. I feel lucky. I don't feel unlucky that I've had cancer. I feel lucky. Um, when I went back to my appointment, when I went to the appointment on the Tuesday with a specialist nurse, sat there with my wife, um, and we heard the words, yes, um, she said, do, first of all, she said, do you know why you're here? Because I guess they have to make sure that you fully understand what you've had all the tests for. I said, yeah, I know why I'm here. Um, she said, well, you have got prostate cancer. We're going to fix you. And it was like that. And for me, getting told I had cancer was a relief because I've been so worried for two or three months to actually get told, yes, you've got it. We're going to sort you out. It was a, it was like a, it, it, honestly, it, it was like a, a sort of a breath of fresh air in my life really to be told that they then went through what they were going to do. Um, and they said, obviously we can't guarantee it. We'll, it will fix it, but we think it will. Um, I then, so that was in December. I had an operation on the 20th of January and they removed my whole prostate. Um, that was what they said they wanted to do. And there were a couple of other options. You can watch it. You can wait and see if it develops further. And a lot of people do that because it is a very slow-growing cancer. But they, um, I decided that mine was sort of medium level. It wasn't the most aggressive. It wasn't outside the prostate. They were fairly confident. And they said, we can um, remove the prostate, save all the nerves around it, so you'll lead a, 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 a normal life afterwards. Um, and, uh, and and that was that was what happened, really. So... Uh, yeah. So, Darren, how's how's the recovery been since since January? I mean, you, you, you're obviously back at work now, and I know you've been incredibly busy since since March time. We've been talking regularly, so I mean, how's that recovery been? Uh, obviously, it's a it's um the the operation is robotic surgery. They go in through your stomach, they they remove it. It's obviously fairly invasive what they do in actually inside you. Externally, nothing much to see. But internally, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot going on in there with your bladder, with the, the neck of your bladder. Obviously, the prostate coming out, saving all the nerves, everything. So, for the first probably six weeks, I had six weeks off work. Um, they um, during that time, I was really, really tired. Um, obviously, you have lots of bladder issues. There's lots going on, but basically, you're, you're glad to be alive. Um, so they sorted it all out. Then I got the all clear on in April, on the 21st of April, saying it's all been removed, hasn't spread outside. Um, and almost sort of at that point, I felt, well, I'd already started to feel a lot better. Um, COVID hit at the end of March and I, and it was, it was sort of crisis time in, in, in the industry. And I, and I felt great. I felt I was on it like a shot. It was almost like a switch when, when I started to feel better and I felt loads better. I'm now, um, I do, I go cycling every day, uh, I'm walking loads. I can't really go jogging. But that's probably the only thing I can't really do. So I feel I feel absolutely fantastic. I feel completely back to normal. I eat, drink, everything that, as as normal. So completely, I'm completely fine now. Um, a lot of people aren't like that. After that, quickly after the operation, it can take six months. It can take a year. It can take a little bit longer. My age was on my side. So early diagnosis, getting getting it caught and getting it taken out and getting on the road to recovery just makes me feel so lucky that this is that this has happened to me i never thought i'd get cancer you never think that sort of thing will happen it's happened they've removed it and as i say i feel lucky and i just feel an awareness thing which is kind of why i'm doing this video to tell people to get themselves checked in there well it's supposed to be over 50 for black men it's supposed to be from 45 um because they are more more um more prone to it if you've got family history I think there's a thing about breast cancer in your family as well. If your mum's had breast cancer, which my mum has, so maybe the warning signs should be there. But if you have anything, any concerns at all, and there should be a national screening program for it because, as I say, one in eight men, it's 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 vital to get checked early, get it sorted, get on with your life. And um, and Derek, would you give um, and point anybody to a certain place to get? more information on this i mean was, was there any organizations that helped you during this time 
Yeah, well, Prostate yeah, Cancer UK, are, they're, they're, they're a very good charity that are, are all over this sort of stuff. Um, I guess my main advice would be, it's just a blood test. That is the main thing. You can, the doctor may try and talk you out of it because you can get false positives from the PSA test, but that was the key thing for me. And just go to the doctor, get a PSA check done. If, you, if you're over 50, do it anyway. If you've got concerns about family history or any symptoms, do that. But yeah, Prostate Cancer UK, I mean, some, some of the stories on there are pretty scary. My one is one of the good ones. Get yourself checked out early, very simply, by a blood test and, and just really that would, that's my biggest piece of advice awareness for this and early diagnosis and then you can get it sorted obviously you might need some surgery things like that but is, is it better to know or better to bury your head in the sand and not know Derek, absolutely fantastic advice there and um, superb to see you fit and well and thank you for all the help you've been giving to uh, to Cardio Magazine and spreading this very, very important. No, it's, it's a pleasure. I feel really passionate about this, as you can tell. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure. Derek, okay. best of luck to you. Thank you ever so much. Right. And we'll, uh, we'll make sure we share the information uh, about this in the article. So thank you very much to Derek there for, uh, for, for joining us today. Uh, if you'd like um, more information on that, as I say, We'll make sure that we include the, the, the details to Prostate Cancer UK in the article on cardiomagazine.co.uk. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Indeed.